report on the country-specific safety culture forum Sweden. This report captures the outcomes of a groundbreaking forum that was held last January in Stockholm, Sweden, brought together over 40 representatives of the Swedish nuclear community and international guests to discuss the impact of national context on safety culture and safe operations of nuclear installations. This is a subject that was uh, developed over time between the NEA, the Nuclear Energy Agency, and the World Association of Nuclear Operators when we were thinking about the aftermath of the Fukushima Daiichi accident and what lessons learned we could take that could be applied in a broad context. It became very clear in our conversations that there's a need to think about the impact of nat national cultural context whenever thinking about safety culture. And we also have recognized that every national context is very different and has its pluses and minuses. To explore that, we reached out to the people of Sweden, uh, specifically SSM, the Nuclear Regulator of Sweden, to have a conversation about this. As we reviewed these lessons from the past, we realized that one of the most difficult lessons to deal with is to communicate and address the lessons of the human aspects of nuclear safety in nuclear installations. Nuclear power is a highly technical undertaking, and those who design, build, and operate nuclear plants are highly experienced, very qualified specialists in a wide range of engineering and scientific fields. However, the technical aspects can not only be the area of focus to ensure good nuclear safety. Attention to the safety culture of the work environment is also required. Organizations need to consider how people interact and communicate with each other when are, when are issues, when, how are issues are raised and how they are addressed, and what priority is given to safety, especially when they seem to compete with other priorities. The challenging issue of the relationship of national culture to nuclear safety culture has become increasingly an area of focus around the world. Operators from many countries can easily work together to identify and address an issue associated with nuclear fuel operating under certain conditions and compare experiences but how do they address areas of human behavior and evaluate best approaches from country to country? Physics always works across borders, but can the same be said of issues of safety culture and communications within organizations? Practical experience has shown that there are important differences in how people work together and communicate in different countries. The national context in which people live does not stop at the gate of a nuclear power plant. Hence, it's important that the nuclear community take time to uncover these national influences, realize their potential impacts on safety, and develop a path forward to sustaining healthy safety cultures. In undertaking this activity, we recognize that this is a unique approach to dealing with a very complicated issue. This is not a scientific study. Uh, we are not trying to analyze the culture of Sweden in any great detail or any other country. It's impossible to do that in the kind of time and resources we've put into an effort like this. But it is an opportunity for experts in a particular country to come together to talk about these subjects in an open and honest way. That's what we were able to accomplish with, safety, with CSSF Sweden. The approach we took consists of a process of reflection and dialogue to collect information on the national attributes. We performed what we call a snapshot study, um, a, a series of focus groups and discussions with experts to talk about how do we think about the cultural impact on, on safety culture in, in, in Sweden in this case. There are characteristics that reinforce nuclear safety culture and some characteristics that may not. The goal of the forum is not to make a judgment on the, of the national context, but to raise awareness and to provide tools for those in the country to go forward with further conversation. We never have any goal of comparing cultures, but to identify and leverage strengths in the work with potential challenges. As I said earlier, no national culture is preferable to another, but as safety culture is optimized in any setting, an understanding and reflection of the relevant national context can make training and the absorption of nuclear safety culture principles more effective. The outcome of this forum will hopefully help regulators and operators to improve their training programs and make further improvements to their nuclear safety cultures. The report can be used to further the dialogue within each organization and help design effective training programs. 
A learning organization that strives to continuously improve safe operations regularly reflects on its organizational behaviors and their underlying core values and deeply rooted assumptions. The hope is that this first forum is the only the beginning of a process that will continue in Sweden and also be of interest to other member countries, ultimately inspiring them to start their own journey towards a better understanding of their national context and its relation to safety culture. As Director General of the NEA, I want to note that the collaboration with WANO for the creation of this forum uh, and, ex and, express, and, we, and we express our appreciation to uh, SSM for hosting the first forum. When I went to SSM with this idea um, almost two years ago, I think, um, we had a very vibrant and exciting conversation. It became very clear that we picked the right partner to do this first forum. So we're very pleased um, to be with them today to talk about this. In particular, we have today with us uh, Frederick Hassel, the Deputy Director General at SSM, who will talk about this from the perspective of, of his country and he as a regulator. So Frederick, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very Bill, uh, much, Bill, and thank you, NEA, for uh, setting up this uh, forum and, and for organizing this uh, webinar. And also thanks for Vano for, for being partner in, uh, with, NEA, with NEA to, to create this uh, forum. Uh, as you said, Bill, when you came with this idea, you, you really uh, <laughs> opened a door that we have been trying to find for a long time. Uh, uh, these kind of issues have been on the agenda for us for many years, but we have had a hard time finding a good partner to work with them. And, and we, we really found that this was an excellent uh, cooperation to join into. The, that, that was not uh, the big issue. The big issue, I think, was how to organize it. And I think Ian will come back to that later. Um, for us, uh, HTO, human uh, technology and organizational issues, is on a priority, and we have used these knowledges many times to, to develop nuclear safety and security in Sweden. Uh, so, uh, as you can see on the picture, you can see the people participating and uh, the enthusiasm that went into the forum. But I would like to try to speak a little bit broader about the subject and, and what we have learned. The first issue I would like to raise is, do uh, different national cultures exist? And if so, do they matter? Uh, I don't know if you uh, have seen them, but uh, when, when I, Sweden joined the European Union, we had reasons to go to Brussels in, in the mid-90s, and there were lots of uh, characters on, on how different Europeans were, were uh, what attributes they had. Uh, and and uh, one was flexible as a Swede, talkative as a uh, Finn, uh, controlled as an Italian. And there was joke, jokes about that, and you can, you can laugh about it, but, but actually it sa says something about the different nationalities. And that is sort of for fun. But uh, when I came across this uh, picture uh, that uh, was presented. I actually, first time I saw it was when the stand-up comedy comedian in Sweden, very famous one, Fredrik Lindström, who also took part in the forum later, uh, used this uh, uh, in one of his stand-up comedy shows. Uh, I, I went back and see what kind of scientific ground basis is this for, the, for, for this presentation or this graph. And it's the World Value Service, uh, an, an independent uh, research institute in Austria that developed these on, on questions to different countries. And, and on the axis, you can see traditional values up to secular rational values. And on the other hand, survival values and self-expression values. Uh, and then you can see uh, Sweden uh, almost falling out of the graph in, in the top right. Uh, so, so what this shows is that we have different values. And then the question is, do these values actually have an impact on the national attributes and the national culture. Uh, and uh, I do think they have. Uh, and what we did with this forum was that we looked ourselves in the mirror. And sometimes it's tough to look yourself in the mirror. Um, 
you have a feeling that you look sort of nice and, and so on. And, and sometimes you actually do because you have lost some weight uh, the couple of months before or the opposite, and then it's not so nice. But, but mirror yourself, uh, it's important. And especially in these ATO, HTO issues, it is important. And if I go back to, to, the, to the previous picture, uh, I can say that, that there is an expression in Sweden saying we, we are landet lagom, meaning we are the country of average. Everything is average. And when you look at this picture, we are the country extremists. Uh, and, and that's the delta that, that occurs when you actually mirror yourself. And that was the interesting thing about this exercise. We were able to, to mirror ourselves and, and to be in an environment that we could uh, be honest towards each other. And I think there was one time during the discussion when one of the CEOs of the industry told his colleagues, well, look, now you are a little bit uh, complacent here to, to, to what, what we are actually discussing. And, and we were able to catch up on that and, and the, the discussion developed. So, uh, what, were, what were the findings that we, that we did actually find during these uh, snapshot study and then the forum? And uh, we found out six areas uh, where we uh, thought that there were some attributes that could actually be positive or negative. And the two first two uh, words... Uh, uh, we had to invent. Samskap and allskap is not words in the Swedish language. But by the dialogue with NEA and Vano, we found out to describe, to really describe the Swedish attributes, we had actually to create new words. And that, I think, shows how embedded these cultural aspects are within our society, so we don't even have words for them. And what do they mean? Samskap means being in unity and will take a collective accountability for well-being and harmony. Allskap, everyone should have the same rights and all things should be fair. These two are very cornerstones in the Swedish society, I would say. Security and trust, we think that we are secure, sometimes more secure than we actually are. Uh, and that for good and for bad. And we have a big trust uh, uh, in society, if you compare it to other countries, I would say. If you, if you look at the statistics uh, about the trust in authorities, for example, uh, Sweden, uh, Sweden and Finland, I think, is on the top level in the European Union uh, when, when you measure trust on authorities, for example. Uh, freedom, and freedom in, in this respect means that I, as an employee, expects that my managers will give me freedom to, to, to do my duties uh, as I find them suitable and, and, and uh, to make this efficient. We don't like micromanagement in Sweden. Uh, one, one expression during the forum was, we don't like bossy uh, management. Um, Complacency and national pride, I've touched upon that. That is also something. To say this is made in Sweden uh, and, and is really Sweden is the best. And that could be good because if you have that confidence, you are actually able to mirror yourself a little bit more. But on the other hand, that could make you uh, uh, complacent in, in, in actually developing things because we are already the best. Um, and then we have the uh, last one, and that is drive towards shared understanding. In Sweden, we tend to... to increase the time where we uh, figure out what to do rather than just doing it. And that is the drive to get everyone on board. Everyone should understand, and then things go, uh, can carry on. I think these attributes have developed in Sweden because they have been uh, uh, giving us a good, good value for money, so to say. This is part of the development of the Swedish society for, for many, many, many years and, and that have fine-tuned these attributes. So they have been beneficial to us, but there are also deficits. With all of these 
uh, things, uh, there are good things and bad things. And uh, I will now show two short examples where we can see different of these national attributes where they actually matter. And one is uh, the scandal that we have with the with, uh, security leak concerned by the Swedish authority for uh, outsourcing decision. And this was uh, a big scandal in Sweden. It was not corruption. It was not agents. It was too much trust and, and, too, too, uh, and too much uh, doing your own business within the organization, I would say. The other one was uh, the forest fires that we had now. Uh, 60,000 acres of Swedish forest were burnt down during this summer. And I would like to say, uh, um, uh, my th feeling is that Alskop and Samskop in some way have put, uh, and the, the strive to get uh, everyone with uh, the timetable to take the important decision uh, that actually made this fire bigger than it actually should have been. By this, we try to get the situation where we will use this information, use this knowledge from the forum to see that the next scandal is not nuclear. And by this, thank you. And as you can see, Swedes can also be happy. Thank you very much, Frederick. Um, as I mentioned, this began as a um, cooperative activity between the Nuclear Energy Agency and WANO. And uh, in reality, it really grew out of almost a single conversation that I had with uh, WANO CEO Peter Przeski. And, and we had had a very vibrant um, discussion and debate about this subject. And um, we had a follow-up meeting where we concluded that um, Sweden might be the first, the first country we would try this, and uh, we, we, we feel like our, our, our choice of Sweden was very well ratified in this exercise. Um, and um, Peter was not able to be with us th this afternoon, but he sent um, the next best thing, <laughs> uh, which is a, an individual who was very, very deeply involved in this exercise, and in particular was very involved in making sure that the technical aspects of the scenarios used for the discussion uh, were, were valid and, and appropriate. Um, and that is Ian Moss, uh, who is with us today. And uh, Ian is going to give us a little bit more detail about how the, the whole uh, forum unfolded and some of the basis behind it. So Ian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bill, um, and uh, thank you, Frederick. Um, it was an absolute pleasure working in your lovely country with lovely people, and uh, we really enjoyed the, the event. Um, I'd just like to start by reading a, a quick opening statement, and then I'll discuss more about the actual design of the forum. WANA has a well-developed set of safety culture principles, the traits of a healthy nuclear safety culture, which we expect to see in all of our member organizations who run over 450 units and plants in 33 countries across the globe. How these traits are interpreted and enacted will differ from country to country depending on factors such as the national culture and the prevailing company culture. In our peer reviews, which we run every four years, we get a unique perspective of how this culture can enhance or undermine nuclear safety. So for senior managers from our members and the regulator to come together for a day and a half to explore how their national context can impact on nuclear safety has to be a really good thing. And that's why we've supported this forum. And I think that's why we'll continue to support this forum. So let's talk a little bit about the, um, the design of the forum. So we had a, we had a challenge. Sorry. And our challenge was how do we get the audience interested and engaged to learn from this event? After all, nuclear safety culture is not an easy subject to discuss. And these people are senior executives, so we, only, we did not only have to entertain them, but they had to learn from the event. So we reached back into um, a type of theater called Roman Forum Theater. And what's unique about this theater is that the audience actually control the outcome of the play. So we thought this was a good idea, 
but we thought we'd take it a step further. So what we actually did was we got the audience to actually become the actors in the play. Now, as you can imagine, this was um, an interesting um, uh, proposition to sell to Frederick and Bill. Okay, I think at the time they thought that we were absolutely crazy, but they soon warmed to, to, to this as we, as we discussed it with them. And, uh, and Frederick, uh, you probably came up with a whole lot of, <laughs> of extra ideas as a result of, uh, of the selection of this forum. Uh, when, when you uh, started us engaging us as well in, in the pre-planning, we, we actually tried to uh, give you a thousand new, uh, new ideas to, to work with, and, and I think we kept you awake at night with this. Yeah. I must say there was a lot of revisions. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit, uh, the next slide. So a little bit more about the, the actual forum design. We took an, an actual event, and this was an event that happened to me more than 20 years ago as a young manager in a nuclear power plant. And I really understood how this event affected me and how I felt at the time. And so we thought this would be a useful thing to, to you know, that had realism that we would start as the basis for this role play. We then overlaid it with some of the Wano safety culture principles, things like trust, questioning attitude, decision making, healthy challenge. And the next step was then to use the results of the snapshot, snapshot survey and pepper this with the Swedish national context. Obviously, we had to elaborate a bit to, to make it a little bit um, more real. And then we had our script. The next step, which was an important step, was to ensure that we sanity checked this. So we passed the script on to people who had worked in the Swedish industry, nuclear industry, to ensure that it was technically correct. It was important to be technically correct because we wanted people to focus on the behaviors and not the technical aspects of the scenario. So you can imagine, um, with all these ideas and all these changes, it was quite a long process to come up with a final script, but we did. A little bit about the, the scenario design. Uh, we invented a fictitious nuclear power station called the Karlsvik Power Plant. And this is a power station somewhere in Sweden that's under economic pressures, a problem that, that most or many of our members are currently facing. In terms of the technical scenario, uh, and this was the real scenario that I experienced back uh, 20 years ago, uh, this was to do with the increased vibration of a high head safety injection pump. Um, it, the vibration had, had, had suddenly increased, and yet we didn't know why it was. It was a strange... Um, a pattern of, of vibration, um, and it, it, it took a long time to solve. And so we wrote that into the script exactly as it had happened. The next slide discusses the role play. So what we had was seven scenes broken into three acts which followed a timeline. So you can see at T0, that was the event. But in Act 1, this was the precursor to the event. And Act 1 was a conversation that happened between the chief nuclear officer and the plant manager. And it was related to economic pressures that the company was facing. And as a result of that discussion, certain actions were taken, certain conversations were had, which started to impact on the decision-making of the people in the Colesvik power station. Act 2 was the response to the event, so when the event or when the, the, the vibration uh, uh, when the, the vibration was discovered in the plant, um, there were certain responses, and again these responses were, um, were these responses were affected by those early decisions, and of course in Act Three when the event happens we discuss the aftermath of the event. In between each of these acts we had these forum breakouts where the audience would leave the room in their small groups, and they would discuss the event. They discussed, you know, was, you know could this happen here? What were the, what were the, 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 the specific um, cultural aspects that um, might have positively impacted the event or negatively impacted the event? And so they unpicked the event to try and get a better understanding about the national culture and how that could impact on the decision makings and, of course, nuclear safety. 
Um, one thing I sh should say, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, but one of the things I noticed when I looked at the audience as they were watching the role players, watching their colleagues up there role playing this, you know, if you could have taken a photograph, it would have been fantastic for this slide because people were just sitting there with smiles in their eyes and they were really leaning forward and they were engaging with their colleagues. And so this, um, it was a really, really effective way of doing this. The other thing I also noticed at these breakout forums, they were planned for an hour. Well, they just carried on right through tea time. Some people, you know, you know missed tea to continue these discussions. And at that point, we knew that this had been a successful event. So thank you, Bill, for inviting us, Frederick, for hosting us, and uh, thank you all for being here today. Thank you very much, Ian. And um, l let, me, let me also highlight something that Ian mentioned, which is that one of the things that made this forum unique for us um, was the fact that it brought together not just people from the regulatory community, which is the group that we normally work with, but also with the industry. And so we had a very wide distribution of people from the Swedish industry, uh, from fuel fabricators, uh, from uh, nuclear utilities, obviously, in addition to SSM staff, regulatory staff, that were in the audience and participating on a very, um, I guess I would say, levelized basis. There were no ranks in the room. Uh, everyone was referred to by first names, and that we think this worked very, very, very well. Um, representing the, the industry perspective of this, I think, was very important and is a big contribution to the conversation. And so we were very pleased that um, we had uh, so many people from the Swedish industry participating. And one of those people um, was uh, Ann Berg, who is Vice President for Corporate Independent Oversight at Swedish Utility Vattenfall. And Anne is going to give us a few of her thoughts in the aftermath of this forum. So, Anne, the floor is yours. Thank you. It was a very interesting and valuable forum. I was very happy to participate. Uh, the topic was very uh, modern, I think, to look at the natural culture. It's, it's, it's a bit scary, as Frederick said, but also nice to, to look upon yourself and see how you actually behave. Uh, the discussions and learnings were also very good because it's one of the few examples when you actually gather all of uh, n uh, the national nuclear Sweden together actually, which is, is rather unique, you discuss with the regu regulator and the suppliers and the utilities. So it was uh, one other very good aspect of this. Uh, the format was uh, very good with lectures and uh, discussions and role plays. And I think these varying setups really made things stick. And as Ian said, I think the role plays, of course, was very good because you were in a role play, you had time to reflect, you went back into the role play. And the, the level of uh, motivation and engagement was actually very, very nice. Myself, I was a maintenance guy who was trying to, to get management attention to these vibrations in the pumps, uh, which took a while. Mm. Uh, the impact uh, it had, I think it uh, was really deeper group discussions of typical Swedish behaviors. And of course, I think we usually uh, focus on the negative ones where we think we can improve. But of course, there are good ones as well. Uh, one of the things I recognized the most was the rather vague meeting structure and how we do make decisions. I know a lot of uh, international people participating in Swedish meetings and people discuss a lot and then all of a sudden every, everyone gets up and are very happy and everyone is expected to know what to do. And no one really noticed uh, were there a decision taken or not. And uh, so that's uh, one thing. And also if we are challenging enough, if we actually, uh, we have the consensus culture, we want the group to agree uh, and the group agreeing is more important than hierarchy. So we had very good discussions on this. Also what was good, it's actually we had participation of executives in these more uh, nuclear safety culture related discussions, but also people on different levels. And this is rather unique that you actually mi mix people across the organizational layers in these aspects. And I also think personally it was a very good way of uh, getting to know how you can arrange a workshop. We do quite a lot of workshops, but not with this uh, really varying setups, uh, different ways of doing it to really get it to stick. 
So what is being done now? Uh, we are, of course, very happy now to, to read the report in full here uh, and study it. But we have made some key learnings already now. And I think the most important for myself is don't fight your culture. You need to live with it. You should know the disadvantages of it, but make sure you, you plan for this. And an example is with our vague meeting structure and decision making, you could actually put quite a lot of more structure into your meetings to make sure you have the agenda filling it in uh, to compensate for the vagueness. You can also make sure that you have someone communicating the decisions afterwards and a responsible person for follow up. So you, you could actually work around your national culture. Uh, we also learned that we need to describe objectives better and follow up and show really what is being done. Uh, you said we did, you said we did, so you can actually feedback to people that what has been coming in and what you do about it. So the next steps now, uh, as I said, we will re review the report, but we've already started. So we have in Vattenfall something called nuclear business acumen training, where you really train people, not directly nuclear, but taking decisions directly or indirectly that affect nuclear. So we've integrated these national culture learnings into that training. Uh, we do have local safety culture events, and in some parts we have used the learnings already in these, and we will continue to do that. But most important then, we will uh, read the report and study it, and hopefully together in the national community actually see how we take this on further. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. It was a very good experience, actually. Thank you very much, Anne. I appreciate that perspective. Um, so we have now um, reached a point where we're prepared to answer a few questions from the audience, and we have a few that have come in. And um, the first one regards the, um, the, the foreign participation in the forum and, and some aspects of, of foreigners working in the Swedish nuclear industry. Let me answer the first part first. Um, which was uh, to describe the foreign participation in the forum. Uh, the people who were most engaged in the activity were all from Sweden. Uh, we did, however, have a cadre of people who were on the sidelines um, uh, with uh, translation earphones on, including myself, uh, because the forum was actually held in Swedish. And uh, these people were from a variety of countries. We had representation from uh, Japan, uh, Korea, um, I sort of represented the United States. Um, Peter Przeski was there. He sort of brought the South African and, uh, perspective. Um, and we con constituted the internet. Oh, and also we had um, a regulator from Finland. Uh, so that constituted the regulatory, the, um, the, the, the foreign uh, participation um, in this activity. Uh, but, uh, and there is another question along these lines I'd like to direct to you, and I'll just read the question, that uh, there is mention in the report of foreigners working in the Swedish nuclear industry and some culture clashes that they see. Since there are both German and Finnish companies which have ownership in Swedish reactors, could you comment on the differences in management, work style, et cetera, and how they affect human technical factors in plant operation? So perhaps you can react to that. But I think uh, the basis is uh, in Sweden, as you said, there shouldn't be bosses around. You, you have managers, but you kind of uh, act as you ask people to do things, although, although you're probably wanting them to do it. And I think it's uh, we talk a lot in Sweden, we have the consensus culture, and we bring everyone together. If you compare with Finland, I mean, it's very much shorter sentence directing what to do, but you do really listen when they say something. Mm -hmm. And Germans, I think we are, I have a German in my team, and I'm so happy because the Germans are so good at follow-up. Uh, you, you ask them to do something, and they follow through 100% or 110%. And there's a Swedish, uh, sometimes we actually, we, we follow through our things to 90%, and the rest of 10% kind of uh, is vaguely disappearing. Uh, but if you have a German in the team, you can actually make sure that you, you do everything to the last uh, minute. So <laughs> I'm very happy in this aspect. Mm. Yeah. Frederick, would you like to comment? Yeah, I would abs absolutely like to comment that. And, and, and maybe that uh, what the last sentence, as Anne said, is that, that if you mix cultures, 
in the power plants. You you should uh, it will make you better in in handling your your shortcomings because there are others with other glasses looking at what is happening and can react on that. So so maybe we need some more uh, international uh, components within the industry and in the society as well. Uh, it's, it's, good, it's a good observation, particularly since you know, the nuclear business is becoming so so much more globalized than it was in the past, and there's much more um, uh, of, a, of a, a factor of people going from country to country to work in different organizations. I was just uh, in a country, I won't name a country, in, um, in, in, in Eastern Europe not long ago, where we were hearing that there were so many, there were a lot of people being hired from their plants to go work in other plants overseas. And so you're starting to see this migration of nuclear expertise, which is a good thing in a lot of respects, but uh, also probably presents some, some new challenges. Um, let, me, let me ask, uh, let me direct a question to you, Frederick, because I think this is a very important question. I'm sure that as people in the public look at a report like this, um, they may ask the question, is there something here we should be concerned about? Is there some aspect of the culture that makes the plants less safe than they would otherwise be? Um, can you can you react to that? Because I think it's a very important question that, that maybe people who see this for the first time might ask themselves. We are quite confident that we have uh, Swedish uh, the Swedish plant and the safety levels in Swedish, the Swedish plants are really good. We we strive for continuous improvements, and this is this is actually one part of this to continue to learn, continue to understand and continue to, to develop safety. Uh, and, I, and I think this shows that we are not uh, com uh, in, a, in a situation where we think that we are the best, uh, that brings us complacency, rather than, than, than we ac we're actually uh, uh, striving for developing further. So, so for, from a, a good safety level, I think this report will make us, us even better. And that was one point I would like, I tried to make in the, in the last, some of the last slides of, of my presentation. I no, appreciate that very much. And, and let, let, me, let me sort of ask this question in a little bit broader fashion and aim this um, perhaps at you, Ian, looking at it from an overall sort of one perspective. Um, th these issues of safety culture uh, are obviously something we've paid a lot of attention to in the last several years. And, you know, it's important, of course, that we don't look at this as comparing one culture to another and trying to say that one culture is better for safety and another culture is not good for safety. That's not the point of this. But clearly there are these, um, these very specific characteristics that show up from, from country to country. Um, can you comment on this as sort of a, a broad perspective and how culture affects safety and how sort of the general public should be thinking about this, this subject as we go forward? Yes. Um, what is quite interesting, I spent 25 years in South Africa in a nuclear power station, and then I moved for the lot, uh, 10 years ago, or 11 years ago to the United Kingdom. And, I, you know, when you're in a culture, you don't really appreciate... You know what your culture is. It's you know your culture is just normal. Um, so you know trying to appreciate you know things that you do or don't do and how that impacts on safety culture is quite hard to do. When I moved to the United Kingdom, you know I I could I felt things were differently. And let me give an example. In South Africa, you know it's a very innovative country, a young country, and people are keen to take an, an embryonic idea and run with it. In the United Kingdom, it's a lot harder. People spend more time debating, discussing, discussing, but once they've decided, you can't stop them. And it's very, very different. And, and I guess the same uh, would apply to, um, to different plants around the world. You know, there's certain things where you've got to be aware that your culture could put you in an awkward situation and could be detrimental to safety culture. And being aware of that is important to preventing an event. So I think... Um, you know, we are not aware of our cultures when we live in a country. And I think having a forum like this that just brings it up and shows us that the, these are the things we need to be aware of. And then, and as you said, and then we can focus on it and put countermeasures which will improve nuclear safety culture. Yes. Frederick, would you like to comment? Yes, and, and I think what you are now touching upon, and Anna was also in, in, into this in her, her remarks, is that, that by, by putting up 
some questions or, or, uh, or some, some methodology, you can actually uh, lower the risk for the bad impact of the culture. And it's, it's all small details. And I would also say that my conclusion after this, this is not, not only relating to nuclear in Sweden. This is really relating to, to, to many aspects of society and, and for uh, uh, the governmental system as a whole, actually. Uh, let me ask you a sort of a follow-up to that because um, your 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 job as a regulator to assure nuclear safety, um, to assure that the you know, industry is following the rules, uh, so to speak. From a, from your perspective as a regulator, how do you deal with this issue of safety culture? I mean, is this something that regulators can regulate, or is this something where regulators can encourage and be more of a cheerleader? How, how do you view it? I will say that, that the way we are using uh, safety cult indi indicators and, and HTO knowledge uh, have, have shown in the past, in the last two decades, that these have been the method to be proactive in, in handling safety issues. Uh, I mean, all of the three nuclear power plants in Sweden have been under special supervision during this time. And, and for two of those uh, three uh, power plants, we acted before anything happened due to the fact that we had safety culture indicators. Uh, and, and then we had a discussion with the utilities about uh, what do we really mean? And we could show that, it, look here, your safety culture is declining. And if you don't do anything now, you will actually have something going wrong in your plant. Uh, and, and that shifted. So, so uh, now afterwards, and, and, and can of course comment on this, I think they, they, they found out that this was actually we were right about our worries, and that they took action before anything went wrong. I wonder, Anne, would you like to uh, add anything to that? No, I can just say from, from experience, also from the uh, what the regulator has said, we actually put quite a lot of focus on the HDO issues, and we try to use it for, for root causes and to understand why things are happening and proactive, and I think we can use it even more proactively, actually. All right, let me move on to another question here. Um, and and, and I, I guess, and, and I think both of you touched on this very briefly, but maybe I'd like perhaps start with Anne to um, tell us a little bit about where do we go from here? Now, now that we've gone through this exercise and you have this report in hand and you've had people who have gone through this, um, this forum, what do you do with it? How, how, how do you use this as a tool going forward? Yeah, well, what we plan, it's a, it's a learning for individuals. You could read and learn, of course. But what we plan really is to, within my company at least, uh, when we read it through, to have discussions. What does that mean? What does this mean to us? How we can put it into improvement pro programs? What should we think about? I represent also the internal oversight organization. What could we look for? What are good precursors to look for for degrading performance? So we can use it in a variety of ways. Before I ask uh, Frederick to, to give his views on that on the going forward, when, you, when we went through this exercise, were there any, um, as we went through the characteristics, were there, I was just curious, is there anything that sort of, when you saw it, you thought, well, sure, this happens. <laughs> is, is there, can you, can you uh, yeah, Yes, uh, well, of course, you, you kind of recognize your culture without being able to put names on it, but you recognize this uh, very much so. But I really like this, that you can actually, you need to work with your culture, actually, because it is what it is. You could improve it a bit, but you have to work around it. Frederick, would you like to uh, add anything? Yeah, uh, on the question on, on what we are doing now, I can say that on the 26th and 27th of September, all management at SSM will do almost the same scenario-based workshop based on the national attributes that are presented in the report. And then we will take it further within the, in the whole organization. And then, of course, we have the side event at the IAEA General Conference next week, together with Vano and NEA, to present it to, the, to, to, to more parts, bigger parts of, 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 uh, of the nuclear community. And I am also planning to actually try to do something broader within the Swedish governmental system, because I think, uh, as I said, this has a, a more general impact than only nuclear. Well, I appreciate that very much. Um, Ian, I, I have a question for you. The, um, you know, there's, there's often, as we've gone through this exercise and as we've talked with people, um, it certainly has been mentioned that um, 
A, this is a very complicated subject with a lot of permutations, but that there's also um, the, the factors that come into organizational culture. And so from, and again, Wano has a lot of experience in these matters. How, how do you look at organizational culture versus national culture? And how do you sort of sort through all that? Can you comment on how to look at the two aspects of this? I'm not certain that we, you know, we would look at, at national culture. Um, you, know, it's, you know, we have peer reviewers from around the world. And so they focus on the organization and they focus on the performance objectives. I think the important thing is the discussion that comes out of that. You know, you know, if we are starting to see problems in several areas, you know, we start to distill it out and to see if there's a leadership or maybe a safety culture issue that's underpinning that. But I don't think we actually look at specifically at the country, um, you know, the cu culture of the country. I do think people from other countries do see, th see things that are different, um, you know, which they might question. But you know, our teams are really made up of people from you know up to you know, 20 different countries. Um, so I think, uh, you know, it would be hard for them to spot country-specific culture issues. Uh, well, let, me, let me sort of ask Anne to comment on this, because there, there was one, as we got the comments and the feedback from the participants, one thing that we heard very clearly, uh, which we'll incorporate going to the future, is that um, the participants felt it would have been very useful if they'd been able to separate into their organizational uh, groups to have a conversation at the end to compare notes about what they'd heard and what they learned and what to do next. Um, so I, I, I'll sort of ask you a, sort of a version of what I just asked Ian. Is it, is it do you, as you had a room full of people from the Swedish nuclear um, industry and, and, and the regulator that were all together, um, were you thinking also that there were these differences in what Vattenfall, how Vattenfall reacts to things versus what other organizations in Sweden might react. Can you sort through this question of organization versus uh, oh. national? Okay, I thought when, when we actually grouped together across the organizations, we realized we were based in the same culture, actually. So there, I must say that the national culture actually was uh, stronger, maybe, than the organizational culture uh, in the way and the type of questions that we discussed. So, so you felt like the, mm. the national culture was more relevant than the organizational yes. culture? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, and Ian, that you... Kind of, I see you nodding. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see what other questions are, are coming in here. Um, okay. Well, one one question that um, I, I see here is what, and this is more. This gets more bait to the basics of safety culture, as to, to the national culture one, but it's the issue of leadership. How do leaders in organizations, um, you know? instill the right kind of safety culture in, in a nuclear organization. Um, this is very much in your wheelhouse, Ian, so I'll let you take this one. Yeah, I, um, it is a complicated subject, but I have a view that, that the leaders or the CEO of the company is the primary person who sets the safety culture for that company. And it's up to leaders to take this. Uh, probably this needs to be their highest priority. They need to focus on it. They need to focus on their own behavior and instill um, a strong safety culture in the organization. If the leader at the top of the organization is not paying attention to this, nobody else will. Anyone else want to make any comment about that? Yes, Thanks. just enforce what you say. Role modeling is key uh, to everything. Please. Yes, I agree. But the thing that I, I uh, if you, if, if you should, we should learn something from the, from the, forum is that that we are really good managers to be be role models but to follow up to actually ask the questions uh, i think there we have some improvements to do in the swedish context um i have a question about uh, what will what will we do um is uh, nea and wano do we do we anticipate going to other forums um the answer is yes um we already have um uh, been started working with um, the country of, of Finland and had an initial meeting with Finnish regulators in the industry to talk about uh, performing another forum of this nature. They're very excited about this and very, uh, very enthusiastic about it. And uh, so next spring we will do this and um, have a very similar type of exercise. So we're looking forward to that very much. Um, in the longer term, uh, we'll see. I, I think we're open to 
do this with um, with you know uh, many countries as we go forward. We we can't do one a month. It's it's a complicated undertaking, but we can probably do uh, at least one a year, and uh, I think we anticipate doing that go going forward. Oh, let's see. Um, No, I don't think I, I think we have covered the questions that have come in. Um, I'll sort of see if the panel has anything they want to raise or any other issues, any other comments. I think I think, um, and I have mentioned this before, but I think just getting people in a room for one and a half, two days to talk about safety culture is so powerful. You know, it's something that um, we need to work on constantly. Um, and we cannot take our eye off it. So, you know, this event for me, just having the people together talking about it was, you know, really made it a huge success. And I think it's contributed a lot, certainly in, in Sweden, to improving the safety culture and nuclear safety in that country. All right, I do, I do have a, a sort of a, a, a catch-all question, which I'll ask each of you, and maybe, you know, you just answered it for yours. Which was, what was the biggest takeaway from the forum? And maybe I'll maybe I'll start with with you and see if you have a big takeaway, something that you saw in this. I think that um, that my, myself and I think the Wano members who, who attended the forum may have it may have created a, a awareness that when we're out there, there are other aspects that affect the performance of power plants, and so we within Wano are starting to look at doing some training on these cultural aspects to help prepare our people when they go into plants. So I think you know, it's really opened up a window for us to explore some of the reasons why things are as they are in the plants. And? I think I've already mentioned this, don't fight your culture. But I have another thing as well. And this, when you learn about best practice, Bono is a lot best practice, make sure that it's implemented in a way that suits your national culture. You need to make a twist to it or, or make it people motivated to to do it. I, let, let, before, before Frederick, let, 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 me, let me echo that because I think that really is the most important thing that I, I saw in this. And again, it's not that um, we're trying to compare cultures or anything like that. That's not at all the point. But the point is that there are insights that you can gain um, about the culture and how to apply the principles of safety culture, which I think we all agree are, are universal principles, but how do you communicate those? How do you get those to um, uh, instilled in an organization? That's going to change from culture to culture, and and that's that's one of the things that makes it so complex. So I, I fully echo your your comment there, uh, Frederick. Sort of, what's your big takeaway from this exercise? I would say that that I and and our authority understands. Uh, the industry and ourselves a little bit better. That makes us uh, it makes us able to take the next step of improving safety and security in in, in Sweden. And and uh, it's fairly easy, I would say, with 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 small small adjustments, we will uh, be able to benefit from this. And I would also say that, that you should never, ever, in, in this trying to, to, to be a little bit better, forget that there are some things in the culture that are beneficial and that, that, that gives you the momentum to develop safety further. Uh, so it's not only fight the culture, but also use the culture mm. to build safety. Well, let, let me let me let me let me take slight issue with one word you use, which is fight, because I, I don't think. I think one of the things I learned in this exercise and actually thinking about this, and, I, and perhaps even Ian mentioned this or, uh, earlier, but you can't fight the culture. The culture is the culture. The culture is what people grew up in. It's how they communicate. It's how they interact. And um, you can certainly train people to do certain specific things, but over time, the culture wins. And so I think that exercises like this highlight, again, in the context of training and, and communications, um, how to deal with the specific issues that are um, arise, and I, and when Anne was giving her comments, she highlighted the, uh, the, the and this was a big discussion in the forum, the, the meetings mm -hmm. and how the meetings in Sweden sometimes can go on and on and on, and then maybe the conclusion isn't really clear to everyone. 
And the forum did, in that particular instance, highlight what might be a best practice, something that, um, that managers can do um, without being bossy, <laughs> uh, to make sure that people walk out of the room uh, with a clear idea as to what the conclusion was and what they're supposed to do next. So I, I think it's not so much fighting the culture, it's like recognizing the culture and then just uh, dealing with, the, with it in that respect. Um, I think we are um, pretty much out of time. I see people waving hands at me. Um, so um, I want to uh, just conclude by um, thanking um, SSM, Frederick in particular, um, and for, for being um, the host of this and for hosting the um, side event in Vienna uh, next week. Uh, and you and your colleagues in Swedish industry for being um, such fantastic participants in this. And of course, uh, Ian, um, the participation of Wano makes this uh, work very well. So thank all of you. And uh, let me also thank the many people that participate in this, or many SSM staff uh, that participate in this, or many uh, NEA staff from uh, RP Hans and my staff that were very much involved in this. And uh, they all put a lot of effort into this. And I think the, uh, the results uh, show uh, quite well for themselves. So with that, let me uh, we'll conclude this. And Andrew, if you want to uh, wrap us up. I'd like to remind you that uh, the report is available online and can be downloaded on the NEA website at www.oecd-nea.org. For more updates and news, we also encourage you to follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we're on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, excuse me. Thank you. While safety culture has some universal values, how we prepare and train to make sure that those values are upheld are going to be different from culture to culture. But there are differences around the world. You know, how we behave and operate in plants in France is different from how we behave and operate in plants um, in the United States or in Canada or in Sweden. We've learned some very hard lessons over the years about nuclear operations and how human aspects can affect nuclear safety. I think it's absolutely essential that we do whatever we can to eliminate that factor from the future of nuclear safety and to make sure that we can operate nuclear power plants as safely as possible for decades to come.